us. Yeah. And I'm super excited to have Drew Detzner here again. Drew was with us last winter. And Drew is a nutritionist who practices in New Berlin. Actually, he opened up his new practice very recently called 3D Wellness, whereby he is um, setting up in-person and virtual training, education for clinicians and their staff on food, nutrition, whole food supplements. So we're super excited to have Drew here today. And he's gonna really be presenting through a case study fashion. On these slides, you're gonna see a bunch of info. This is from things I've experienced clinically. These are real people. You're gonna see a lot of patterns. Yeah, there's some unique things. I love these Spanish black radish Mintran special today. Yeah. It's going to be totally applicable by the end of this presentation. My case study number three, I'm going to call her Professional Protein. Her name is Marlene. She is a total sweetheart. Total sweetheart. Um, we'll get into that more later. But first, what you need to know about protein and protein-focused eating plans. The range is very great. Some of them say you only need a quarter of a gram for every pound you weigh. So if you weighed 100 pounds, they say you only need 25 grams of protein a day. I think that's a little light. But then we hear the other end of the scale. Sometimes they say you need 2 grams of protein for every pound you weigh. So if you weigh 100 pounds, that would be 200 grams of protein a day. That's a pretty mega disparity, right? 25 versus 200. I don't care if you're talking about grams of protein or dollars. 25 versus 200 is very different. What I'm constantly emphasizing in clinic is that the quality of the protein is so much more important than the quantity. I want their body to get the highest quality source, and I want to support the digestion of it. So they pull as much of that quality out of that as possible. Important note to talk about with clients and patients, protein is for structure and function. It's often confused with energy. Carbohydrates and fat are for energy, and respectively fast and slow. Carbs are for your quick energy, fats are for your slow energy. Now you will have a lot of people say, but Drew, when I started eating more protein, I had more energy. Okay? It's not necessarily because the protein was an energy source, but because the functioning of the energy producers in the body improved with the adequate protein intake. Does that difference make sense? I didn't sell you more gasoline, I made your car more fuel efficient. That's the difference. When we're doing higher protein, a lot of people like it because you don't have to change what you're doing with your carbohydrates or your fats. Whatever you're doing with it, you just keep doing it. It's just that I want you to hit this goal with protein intake. You can do it as a vegan, vegetarian, omnivore, or carnivore. So again, we can see why these different eating plans are getting really popular, because all these different walks of life can jump in one. But the problem with the professional protein is when you get on the higher end of the protein scale, there's a lot of bloating, there's even muscle weakness, and sometimes muscle loss. That's a big bummer for these people, because they go, but I don't my protein, why aren't my muscles bigger? We're going to talk so about some of the common things that can do. You choose for All right, so Marlene, 66 years old. She's 5'6", 140 pounds. She has osteopenia as her diagnosis from her medical doctor. Medical doctor said, I got a drug for it. I'm just going to stick it in you. It's going to fix all your problems. Marlene, that's not her style. So Marlene came to me. She also had low iron and low ferritin on her blood work. And on her hair analysis, she had low calcium, low phosphorus, and low iron. Uh, so she had a bunch going on. And at five foot six and 140 pounds, she wasn't really meaty, and she didn't do any resistance training. So one of the things she was up against with that osteopenia diagnosis was she didn't have a lot of muscle mass pulling on bones to keep them stronger. Does that make sense? One of the ways to keep bones dense is you make the muscles pull on them, and their response to that with adequate nourishment is to yeah, skinny fat people. When you pull on bones and you give them good nutrients like phosphorus and calcium, they densify. Okay, they get more dense. All right, so after a year of trying to eat more protein, it was the first time I met her. 
because of somebody she goes to church with. She hadn't seen her in months, and she walked in and said she was just struck. You look amazing. What are you doing? She said, got this guy, Drew? When I tested her, her thymus gland, up behind her sternum, I hope you all know about the thymus gland, and her spleen, left side rib cage, were all jazzed up, all sorts of problems there. Again, the hydrochloric insufficiency, so her stomach wasn't working, or wasn't working with her brain, I should say. And a high mineral need, like so many people. That's not a unique trait, to have a high mineral need. So we started this strategy, Immuplex. A really unique thing about Immuplex, it has your thymus PMG and your spleen PMG, but then it also has your cytosol extract thymus, and your desiccated spleen. So PMG is that long-term rebuilder stuff, but when you get the cytosol extract of the desiccate, that's like putting out a fire. So what Immuplex does so well for the spleen of the thymus is it puts out the fire and then helps rebuild after the fire is put out. So the transition from one process to the next is immediate. It's like if a house was on fire and the firefighters showed up and there was a truck that had drywall and two by fours also, and they said, Don't worry, once it stops smoking, we'll get building. That's what Immuplex is for the thymus and sleep. Put her on Zypan for that hydrochloric acid, Mintran and Spanish black radish because I care about her. And then this was cool Proto Food. Does anybody in here mess around with Proto Food at this point? That's a great product. Now, Proto Food has things in it that your body can't make. You have to eat the things that proto food has. You get it from foods like scallop and steak, but if you don't eat those things, your body can't use other things to produce them. She took two before garden. That was her physical activity every day. And at first, as a former personal trainer, my concern was that that wasn't enough to engage her muscles. Until she said her garden was slightly larger than an acre. Hmm. That's going to do. We're going to be just fine. She's like, I'm on my hands and knees pulling those weeds, and I'm raking, and using the backhoe, and all that. I was like, great. But I want to make sure we're fueling your muscles, right? Putting the things in there that are going to help the muscles recover. If you're going to work so hard at 66, taking care of an anchor. After two weeks of me, less muscle aches. Very cool. Her muscles were aching because they weren't getting enough. And she was working them. Okay. They weren't recovering the right way. But especially with the proto food and the minerals, all of a sudden muscle recovery was happening. A month into it, she had no more muscle aches. Yeah, so this is as a cumulative effect. Bit by bit, her body learned how to use protein better. Now, quick side note the protein she was eating was probably the right amount for her body, but she wasn't digesting it, hence the Zypan. And she wasn't getting enough of what's in proto food. Hence the proof. Six weeks, and this is cool, newfound confidence. Okay? She always felt unsteady on her feet. She felt way more steady on her feet. I think it's because she was developing muscle mass in her legs. I also think Mintram does wonders for confidence. She was on full of the day. Eight weeks in, better sleep. Thank you, Mintram. And now she's volunteering at her church. It's kind of cool. She went from being tired and sore to be like, hey, my garden's great. I don't hurt, and I got time to volunteer. All right, I jumped way ahead, okay? Go forward six months, repeat a blood work at the doctor. The iron and the ferritin are range. That's pretty cool, right? Because a supplement fixed something on blood work. Huh? Just over a year in, she went back in for her bone scan. No osteopenia. And her doctor said one of my favorite things. I've heard it a couple dozen times now. The doctor said, well, I've never seen that before. Okay, you heard this? Marlene, kind of a tough cookie, a little rough around the edges sometimes. She told me, she looked at her doctor and said, well, now you have to stop saying that because you've seen it. <laughs> okay, Marlene, had a girl, right on. Uh, we repeated the hair analysis also. It was her third hair analysis. The calcium, the phosphorus, and the iron were all improved in her tissue levels also. So now everybody's happy. Marlene feels better, my diagnostics are showing improvement, and her doctor's diagnostics are showing improvement. Everybody's leaving Marlene alone when it comes to health, because everything's going well. Does that make sense?
<laughs> Questions on this slide? All right. Oh, this was cool also. So her chiropractor also commented regularly about six months in that her adjustments helped her. Also commented that the muscles along her spine seemed to be more balanced in terms of development. I think in that garden she was on her hands and knees, and I think she favored muscles quite a bit. She definitely was aware of the you know, left side, right side weaknesses or imbalances. But as we fueled those muscles and fed them, she wasn't afraid to reach with her non-dominant hand for things or lean to her non-dominant side. <coughs> to continue, always chew proto-food before activity. Always. Whether it's um, when she was raking her leaves, moving snow, gardening, whatever. Playing with grandkids, chew proto-food. And then a really basic maintenance plan. A little bit of Immuplex, a little bit of Mintran, a little bit of Spanish black radish. Now, Marlene has been a client of mine for more than a decade now. Her program barely ever changes. I tell her she only needs to come in twice a year. She goes, no, 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 I think I'll come in at least quarterly. He's like, why is that? And she goes, well, I keep feeling better. I don't want to mess it up. Like, Great. Okay, I'll see you every quarter then. But it's a super sustainable plan for Marlene to be on such a simple supplement program. Questions on Marlene? I do. Yeah. So typically when somebody's saying osteopenia or osteoporosis, I'm thinking like calcium food and, yeah. and magnesium and all of that. So if you're yeah. saying with this protocol, this was able to deliver enough minerals to support that. Yeah. So I'm, I love calcium food. I think it's great. Um, <laughs> does anybody remember the standard process handout that used to exist that was cataplex D, calcium food, and ostrophin halting osteoporosis progression? It's like, it's like 15 years old now. Okay, so way old school, but they conducted a small group study proving that calcium food with cataplex D and ostrophin would actually halt bone loss. So that's pretty incredible, right? Um, I love all of those. In this case, I was certain that Marlene's issue was that she didn't have enough muscles to pull on the bones to make them respond the right way. And then the Mintran had enough calcium in it. Um, and the produce from her garden she was eating because it was an organic garden. She had lived on that lot of land for, I don't know, since her kids were babies, and now she's a grandma. So the soil was cared for and all that. Very good. Okay. And we got her to digest it with the Zyphan. Does that make sense? So sometimes calcium food's totally the way to go, ostrophin, but sometimes you just gotta get some muscles to pull on bones with some calcium there. You know, if you can have the best minerals, but you don't absorb them, Right. Yeah, if you have just the right things, but they're not getting in. Yeah. Just a comment about the Mintran. Yeah. Um, I do use them a lot. It says on the bottle supports emotional balance. Yeah. And I know that. Yeah. But some of my clients kind of. Why are you giving me that? You know. And I, and I noticed with the cases that you presented that it appears that all three of these cases were very disciplined, regular. You know, they're keeping their diet and they're keeping their supplement schedule. Yeah. However, we're not always graced with those clients every day. Oh, totally. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so with a client that is maybe going to try to do this type of program, would you add something else or increase the nutrition to try to address that emotional component about the food? Totally. I there is love that idea. That big emotional component related to any type of diet yeah. for most people it seems. Yeah, absolutely. I also think that Drenamin with Mintran is wonderful for addressing the emotional aspect of things. Uh, Drenamin, remember, it's a combo product, so it's got the Drenotrophin, it's got Cataplex C, so it's very energizing, and then it's got the Cataplex B2, formerly Cataplex G, so it's very soothing. So you can say things to them like, I want to talk with you about your food today, and they don't have an instant stress response, where you can actually like, let's have a dialogue. I'm not going to take anything from you today. I want, to, I want you to incorporate this now. And that panic mode doesn't kick in. So when Mintran was the little tablets, which is about half potency of the current, pretty regular thing in my clinic that I would tell clients, if you need two dozen a day, you go for it. So nowadays, that's a dozen a day with the new Mintran tablet size. Let's go. Ready?